Okay, how to tie a bowline for sailing. And no, this is not going to have anything to do with rabbits or trees. The first part of this is going to be how to tie a bowline for sailing. The second part of this is going to be troubleshooting for that if you're having problems. The third is going to go over some variations of the bowline, different ways to tie it. Alright, so let's start simple. I'm not going to use the rabbit in the tree analogy. You've probably heard this before. If you haven't, you will. But let's, let's just go ahead and start. Because these bowlines that we're practicing are specifically for sailing, we're going to tie them a way that most people don't teach. Most people, when they teach the bowline, they teach you with the loop near you, and you tie with the standing line going away. We're not going to do that because that's not practical for sailing. For sailing, the majority of the time in the sailboat you're going to use a bowline is when you are tying some sort of running rigging to a sail, maybe a halyard, maybe a jib sheet, maybe the uh, outhaul to your mainsail, something. You're going to be tying a line to a sail. So you're always going to be tying to something, and that's how I think you should practice it so that when you get out there, it will just happen naturally and you won't have to rethink your knots and turn them around backwards, okay? The carabiner here is going to represent maybe a grommet or some sort of attachment to a sail, and that's how we're going to practice. Now with the bowline, when you tie the loop, it's a non-closing loop, meaning when you've tied it, you can pull as much as you want in this line here, and it's not going to tighten up on the, it's not going to cinch close like a slip knot or something. When you are starting to practice, you should always do the same thing over and over. While you're building your muscle memory, do everything the same over and over. Don't vary, okay? So for the purposes of this practice, we are going to always have the line going clockwise, all right? So let's, in a clockwise fashion, run through our attachment point here, and this is going to be the loop. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to make a, another loop here. Now this loop is very, very important. This loop is also going clockwise. You see, we just continue around. So we just, we continue the clockwise. There's this particular clockwise spiral is spiraling up towards us, all right? One of the mistakes you can do is doing it the other way. We'll show that later in the troubleshooting section. So the right way to do it is clockwise spirals and this spirals up towards us, all right? The next thing we're going to do is when we have this, we're pretty much halfway there. We pick this up, tilt it forward and run this end through, under, all right, and then back along itself through the hole. And then what you'll do is you'll pinch the double over part here and pull on the long part that's going to go back to, you know, this is going to have 20, 30 feet of rope. So we pinch and pull, and there we go. This is the bowline. You'll learn what a correct bowline looks like, but one of the things that's important to note is, first of all, that the line doubles back upon itself. This is one of the key things of a bowline. And the second thing is this kind of collar. It's kind of like a coat collar. But this is a head right here. You get the idea. Um, and this needs to be around the line that runs back to the standing line. So let's do it again, if you're following along. So doing it again. You're gonna run this in a clockwise fashion through the thing you're attaching to. Okay, clockwise. Then we're also gonna create a loop here. The loop is clockwise. And, oh, this is wrong. It needs to be spiraling up towards me. The loop is clockwise, spiraling towards me. If this were to continue to spiral, it'd get closer and closer to the camera. And then from here, tilt the loop forward, through, under, and then back through that loop. Okay. And then to tighten it up, we will pinch the doubled over part and pull here. Ta-da. This is, again, the bowline. What's one of the nice things about the bowline is if I pull, I'm going to put a lot of tension on this. This is probably 40 pounds worth of tension right here. And yeah, nothing happened. Um, so that a fair amount of tension on that rope, but it's still very easy to untie. The rope did not lock down on itself, right? Now that we've done it a few times this way, it is possible to do this counterclockwise if you started learning that way, and maybe that's the way you prefer. I'm going to show that here. However, you should pick one way and stick with it. This is just for the people who might have started learning it the other direction. I'll show what it looks like here. So if you're going to do it counterclockwise, pick one or the other, pick clockwise or pick counterclockwise. If you're going to do it counterclockwise, 
chord is running counterclockwise here. We have a counter, oh, that's backwards. We have a counterclockwise spiral here, but it is spiraling up towards us. That will stay the same. From here again, we tip the loop up, come through, under, and then fall, it follows itself back through. And the same as the other side, you pinch the double over side and pull taut here. And there's your bowline counterclockwise. For the rest of this video, I'm going to stick to the clockwise version though, because I have more muscle memory in that direction. Let's troubleshoot things that people tend to do wrong. First of all, would most likely be getting the spiral wrong. This is the wrong way to do the spiral. This spiral spirals away from me, okay? So if I were to try to tie the knot, first of all, when I tip it forward, it kind of just falls out, falls apart. So it already kind of doesn't work, but if I tried to loop under and around, this knot's just gonna melt like it's not a knot. Another consequence of having it doubled over the wrong way is you might be inclined to tie your bow in like this, right? And this is tricky because this, if you're, if you're not careful, this can look like a bow in. You have a little neck loop right there and you have the two strands running parallel to each other it looks like a bowline but remember this little neck loop thing this like overcoat needs to be running on this line right here the line that runs away not around the loop that's the mistake here this was something that i actually did a number of times before i realized i was doing it wrong i was thinking i was tying successful bowlines this is not a successful bowline so the problem here again is that we had the spiral the wrong way and we completed the knot that way. So if we just fix the spiral, now the spiral spirals up towards us, then when we tilt it forward, it's gonna be more natural to go under this line, the standing line, the long line that runs away with lots and lots of rope. Now when we tighten back up, we have the two lines running parallel and the little neck thing, the overcoat is running towards me. Got it? Okay, another mistake that people might make is they do everything normal. And you're here, you run around, but you go the wrong way around the standing line. Okay, now according to this, we have the little neck thing and we have the two lines running parallel. This looks like a bowline. This is actually a bowline, but this is not the correct bowline that they teach when that comes to sailing. This particular bowline is sometimes referred to as a left-handed bowline or a cowboy bowline or a Dutch bowline. It's got a lot of names. It's still a bowline, but it's not the one you want to use if you're tying to a sail. The reason why is that they say that this tail right here can potentially like snag on things. And if it, if it snags on things, it can, it can kind of break the knot or work the knot loose over time. See? If, it, if it's snagging and pulling and snagging and pulling, if it's under load and not under load, this is one of the weaknesses of a bowlin. If it's not under load, it can shake loose. And with the tail hanging out, it's a little bit more of a danger. So that's why people tend to not like it. However, there is one advantage of this. If the, so with a bowlin, the load is gonna be pulling this, this way, right? Through the knot. But if you happen to have a load that was in the ring, that was trying to stretch the ring out. Think of a balloon in here blowing up, trying to stretch the string out. A bowline could work for that, but in that particular scenario, doing the cowboy bowline, where the tail is on the outside, is the correct solution. That's not really the use case we're talking about now when we're talking about sailing bowlines. So, this is considered an incorrect bowline. All you have to do to fix it is undo the part that loops around standing line and just go on the other side of the standing line and back through the loop. There you go. This is a normal bowline. One more thing that people sometimes have issue with when they're with bowlines is when it comes to tightening. So if you've got a loose bowline and you, you've just finished it, if you pull on the wrong things, sometimes the bowline gets a little bit weird. It doesn't tend to do it for me, but if people are trying to tighten their knot with the wrong things, you see this just, it's kind of weird and you don't really feel like your knot is even tightening. So remember, when it comes to tightening your bowline, you want to pinch the two lines, the lines that are doubled over and the 
long line that runs away from it, and then it cinches up nice. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some variations in tying the bowline. One variation, this one is more for tying with speed. I'll do it once and then we'll walk through it slower. So what I'll do is I'm going to pinch, so same as before, we have a clockwise thing, it's always going to be clockwise. Take this tail, pinch it to this line right here, and then I'm going to flick my wrist under, so I got a loop. Now if you'll see here, if we could break this down, what do we have? We have the clockwise spiral that's spiraling up towards us, the spiral out here, and then we've already stuck it through the back side. So with that pinch and loop, we've done basically the first three steps. From here, we just continue and have the bow in. All right, so let's go through it again. Take the tail, put it on top, pinch right at this little cross right here. And then we're just going to loop a little more room here. Then we're going to loop under and then finish the knot by tying under around. So the key here is most definitely the loop. The loop takes practice and you'll, just, you'll want to probably do this more than a dozen times before you start feeling comfortable with it. I'd say the key to getting this loop going right is starting on top, pinching, then you rotate through and allow this uh, line on the left to double over on itself. And then from there, you're ready to go. This is one of those things to where you can imagine if you get really fast at it, this is a much more expedient way to tie your bow ends because you can be halfway done with your first movement. All right, that way it works well. A, another way to tie the bowlin, and this one I like just because it's it's like magic to me. Well, we're going to start by tying a slip knot. A slip knot is pretty easy. A lot of people tend to do this by accident. Basically, what we're going to do is you're going to create a loop in your line, and then pull the standing part through that loop, and then just tighten it up. So this is what a slip knot is. And slip knot's one of those ones where you pull, you pull, you pull, and then it just all comes apart, right? Most people have tied a slip knot, and it's, it's as easy as make a loop in your string and reach through, pull through, tighten up. All right, that's the basis for this. So I'm gonna do this once again, and then we're gonna walk through how to do it. So with the slip knot way to tie a bowline, we're gonna start the same way as we did before. Have a, oh, this is the wrong way, here we go. Clockwise, spiraling towards me, and then we're going to grab the standing line and pull it through. And there's a slip knot, right? It's good not to tie this too tight, the slip knot. From there, all you need to do is when you're ready for your bowline to come into existence, you stick the rope through and then pull your slip knot like you're gonna pull it out. And look at there's a bowline. It really is like magic. Uh, let's do it again, because it's really hard to follow. I'm going to create a slip knot, same as before. Everything's going clockwise and spiraling towards me. I'm going to make a slip knot back upon itself by, I'll do that again slower, sorry. Take this, grab and pull through on this standing line. We we'll just tighten it up a little bit. So I have a slip knot right here. Then when you're ready, you just pass this through. This could be like a pylon or something. If you're pulling up to, if, if this is a pylon here and you're pulling up to a pier, you can have your slip knot side ready. When you get close enough, throw this around, catch it, and then stick it through your hole. <laughs> so, and then when you pull through, your slip knot's just there. Let's do it again. We prepare with the slip knot. Tighten it up, not too tight because it can be hard to pull through once it's too tight. Then once you're ready, this is as easy as sticking it through and then pulling the slip knot through. And what happens is this whole knot, the slip knot inverts itself and your bowline's right here. I just, this is like just the coolest thing that it just pops out of nowhere. In reality, the flipping way is probably gonna be faster. 
One more thing, the people who are not connoisseurs, I'm sure there's a better word for that, they're not particularly pleased with the Bowen in its most basic form. The argument is that this tail is the weak point and can undo the knot. So there is a way, I think this is called the Alex knot. All you need to do to create a superior version of the Bowen is give yourself a longer tail when you're creating it, just a little bit. So now we have Bowen with a longer tail. What we're gonna do is this line that runs over we're basically going to weave over, under, over, kind of like this line is here. So watch. Over. Under. Over. And then pull it tight. I've read this call, being called the Alex knot, I guess, for the guy who named it. It's still a bowline. It looks a lot more confusing. But all we did was take that tail... All right, here's the bowline we're used to. All we did, well, with it still loose, is we take this longer tail, go over, under, and over, just like a weave, and pull it tight now. Now, this tail is out of the way. It's not gonna come loose. This knot, from a knot kind of sewer's point of view, is much more secure. Another thing is a stronger knot, because these loops right here when they, uh, when they curve around like this, they become weaker. The tighter the curve, the more it weakens the rope. If you have a bigger curve, it weakens less. Now that we've run this through here, these curves run around bigger. And that makes it so that the rope is less weakened by the turns that are put into the rope, if that makes sense. But from what I understand, this way of finish your, finishing your bowlin is a superior way of finishing your bowlin. Lastly, why don't I like the rabbit analogy? The rabbit analogy basically goes like this. You have a hole and you have a tree. This is the tree in this analogy. And the rabbit is going to come, this is the rabbit. The rabbit's gonna come up through the hole, go around the tree, and then back down through the hole because he got scared, right? That's the story. But what people tend to remember with this story is the rabbit, the tree, and the hole. And there's a bunch of nuances that are easy to forget and that lead to unsuccessful knots. People tend to remember, oh yeah, there's supposed to be a hole, but they can get the whole spiral wrong, or even worse, it's on the outside of the loop. Like this is still a hole and this is still a tree. So then the story breaks down because people are like, I know I'm supposed to go through and around a tree and what's going on here, it's not really a bow and Another way to get the rabbit story wrong is if you learn to tie your bowlines with the loop underneath, then you get used to going up and around the line that goes away from your body and then through. This is an appropriate bowlin here, but if you muscle memory that and you remember the rabbit story, then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go up around the line that goes away from you and back down the hole and you think you have a bowline, but remember, this collar needs to be on the line that runs away from you. There's multiple ways to mess it up, and without the key things, the rabbit story just doesn't work. I'm not a big fan of it. All right, so that's my two cents on it. I'm not an expert, but I do know when things are confusing. The way I was taught to tie bowline was confusing. Hopefully, there's some people out there that this way works for them. If not, there's a ton of other good YouTube videos out there, but I haven't seen any that are specifically talking about sailing, that specifically bring up the problem that many people face. So hopefully this helps. If not, let me know. I will probably end up making more knot videos because I, for some reason, I really like the whole knot thing. I used to make a lot of origami as a kid, so, you know, this is kind of similar to that. All right, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next video.